Hi everyone, it's Robin Dudley Howes, the Artsy Bohemian, coming to you from my studio in Los Angeles, California. Today I wanted to share a project with you um, that involves paper dolls. And the paper dolls that I'm using, the stencils that I'm using to make the paper, paper dolls are from Red Lead, which you all know I love Red Lead uh, Paperworks. And also from one of my new favorite artists, her name is Megan Quinlan. She's, I'm just like fangirling over her. I love her journals and um, especially her paper dolls. And she not only has a course on making her style of paper dolls, which I haven't taken, but um, she has a YouTube channel and she often showcases her amazing paper dolls and how she uses them in her journals. And so I wanted to show you my take on what sh she does. Um, I'm kind of, ins I'm inspired by some of the things that she uses to make her dolls. And then I'm gonna show you some things that I've kind of added. And I, I thought because of, you know, we all, all need some peace and um, some hope right now. Um, I thought I would make some angels. And I don't want to cry because <laughs> this is very, very um, personal to me. But <clears throat> I uh, thought, why not turn these paper dolls into angels of hope? And so I don't want to get too mushy. But I, I'm going to be using, this is a red lead stencil. And it's really simple. But it has wings on it. So I thought I would use the wings and I did make a body out of this and I elongated it. So I'll show you how I did that or explain what I did. And then these are the the stencils from Megan Quinlan. Um, I just love them. I love, love, love them. And um, they're, it's very relaxing to make these because um, I do them kind of in a simple fashion and then I do some doodling on them like Megan does. And um, you can get these at in her Etsy store. Sometimes they're sold out. Like she'll have a, a, a collection that she's done and it might have so not, uh, so, sold out. But I think she has some of the, um, these are the ones that she, I think she has quite often in her store. And they're, they're I know it's kind of hard to see, but um, they, the things that she makes with these are just phenomenal, I think, anyway. So, um, without further ado, I'm just going to kind of show you what I've started. And uh, my take on her dolls. So, here's some that I um, colored up with watercolor. By the way, I use mostly watercolor when I'm doing these. Because they're so small, it's a little bit easier. You could probably use... Um, colored pencils too um, and to get this but to get this really soft look yeah colored pencils and watercolor and I just found out about five below which is a discount store everything's you know five dollars and below and I saw they had an art section and I you know you're like mm, I don't know if that's going to be any good but um, they have watercolor paper and it's 300 GSM which is what normally you know watercolor paper is meaning it's thick and it's not too bad. So you get a ton of paper. And those of you who buy watercolor paper know it's a little spendy. Um, and if you're just starting out and you just want to play around, you don't feel guilty, you know, using your watercolor paper. Because even when you buy the more expensive watercolor paper, I think you only get like 15 sheets. This one has a ton. Very impressed. Let's see, this is what it looks like. And you get 36 sheets, so you can't go wrong. And it's big, nine by 12, or 22 by 30 centimeters. So here's, I did a couple, um, these are more muted light colors here that I did. And I'll just show you what I did here. So, she is kind of contempla contemplating and she is, which one is she? She's this one here. Right there. I won't show all of them to you. 
I know you're like, just get to the tutorial. So these are just watercolored. Well, I, I outline them first with a waterproof marker. And uh, Megan um, does lots of different ways to um, outline her stencils. And uh, I use these because they're shades of gray and I want them, I don't want the marks, I don't want like a dark black mark. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so because there's so many different shades of gray in this, you can pick, I've even done the lightest one. I think I did the lightest one on this last set. And it's just nice that you can have an outline without it kind of overcoming these. Cause like I said, these are small on the small side. So, you know, you want to kind of keep them. I, and to my way of thinking, you want to keep them. It's a little bit subtle. <coughs> and these are Faber-Castell. These are awesome. I'm pretty sure you can find them at most hobby stores or Amazon. I also used um, my favorite Uniball white gel pen from Japan. Also, most hobby stores or Amazon. I think you have to buy them in sets of two, but they come in handy. And then, you know, the watercolor uh, paintbrushes that have a, a water ba barrel. So this is like the easiest, most uh, efficient way to me to do watercolor. Um, because I can take it from my studio into the den and work on it and at night if I want to. And then some other kind of water, uh, waterproof, water resistant, uh, black pens. I like these cause they have really tiny, tiny nibs, some of them, and then they get, you know, they go to a bigger size. So there's five of these. Michael sells Arteza now, maybe they have forever, but Arteza has their own website. And then you, I'm pretty sure you can get them on Amazon as well. So I'll just kind of show you some of the things I did. They're mostly watercolor and then just doodling. Uh, some of the stencils that she provides have already have markings on them. So all you have to do is fill them in. And just super tiny, tiny details. I made like moon and stars. She's going to call her free spirit. So they don't have faces. Some of them don't have faces, so you can just make a simple face. I just kept that one blank because I'm not sure if I want to put a face on her. And then when you're cutting around the, the paper, of course, I don't like throwing anything away. So you can make more little doodles and just kind of watercolor some simple flowers or leaves or hearts or whatever you want to do. Here's another one. And I did spend a little bit more time on her face and her facial features. This one, I believe, doesn't have a face on the stencil either. But it has this flower, so you can stencil that flower right on there. And I haven't cut these out yet. I, I haven't doodled on them either. And here's where I just, there was a little extra watercolor paper, so I'm going to just doodle some more on the, those before I cut them out. And I used, uh, that really pretty uh, sparkly little gel pen too on this. And I made a little necklace. Of course, my dolls have to have jewelry on them. And then Megan does this really cool, like these little half circles. I didn't do it like hers. Mine look like a, a mermaid or something. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna start with these. So these are the angels. These ones are brighter colors. And I worked on these last night and they're honestly, they're super quick. So I'm going to show you how I do an outline on one page. And then um, I'm going to cut one out and I think I'm going to use her. So this is the one that is red lead, but it the red lead one is just short. So all I did was extend it. Oh, here it is. So, so that's the red lead, but you can, I don't know if you can see that. It's a short dress. But instead of making the scallops, I just left it blank and then drew the line down and made the scallops down here. And <clears throat> I stenciled the wings as well. And then I added stickles on them. The crystal stickles, the one that I like to use all the time for my dolls. And I'm going to move these out of the way. So here is one that I haven't colored in yet. And that's really that really light gray waterproof felt tip pen. 
So my my plan is to this is another Megan stencil, but she's only half of a body, just like the bust, and it actually fits perfectly on this one. So I'm gonna just do a quick demo on how I do the coloring, and then I'm gonna attach it to the body and then attach the wings. But first, I thought I thought I would just show you a, how I do the pen. You can um, use a traditional uh, stenciling technique where you just pounce the, the, or use a stencil brush on the stencil and the paint will go through. Um, this one here, I initially, this was the first one I did with acrylic paint and it's very dark. So if you like that really dark look, go for it. So there's breaks in the lines and that's because if there weren't any breaks in the lines on the stencil, the stencil would not be a stencil. <laughs> so you'll have to go back in and connect those breaks if you want. So that's it. And I'm just going to do those breaks. Now there's the, you can see where the breaks are, but that's okay because this is a really light pen. And um, we're going to be watercoloring over that. And then I go over it a little bit with um, a white pen. So it's not as muddled. And then you can take, she has these cute little dots here. I think I'm going to use another one of her um, stencils. I hope I'm not making too much noise. Darn it. I have a new microphone that's on me and I forget. How about we do this one? connect this dot here and kind of make a little bit of a chin and I'm just going to go for the eyes really lightly just two half moons a nose and I'm going to wait on the mouth and the um, eyebrows because I'm not sure what color her hair is going to be. So that's it. So I'm going to color in and cut out her. The only thing about these um, pads is I tried tearing this like you normally would and it <laughs> completely distorted the, the binding. So you have to cut out this part. Not a big deal. So I'm using da Jane Davenport. These are the ones I use all the time. I like them because they're small and these are just going to last forever. They're for traveling, I guess. Um, and uh, I just love them. Very simple. Uh, all kinds of um, brands sell these little tiny ones. So, so I'm just uh, going to start out with one of these pens or watercolor brushes that have water in them already. And I'm going to color her face. And I'm just going to keep in mind that I'm going to color the whole thing, her whole face. I'm going to like maybe bring this down a little bit more. 
Um, that, is that good? But I'm going to be cutting off most of it, so, but it's okay. So um, there's some color already on here. It's kind of darker. So I'm going to mix it a little bit. You just kind of, kind of color it over on your palette here. See what it looks like and then just go for it. And the color always looks darker when you first start. And then when it dries, it gets lighter. And I'm going around her eyes. I'm not coloring her eyes the same color as her skin. I already colored her little cheeks in. And this was with that really light gray permanent felt tip marker. I'm going to take a little bit of darker color and just kind of go under a little, little bit under her chin here and on her neck. And that's about it. Let's see what color I'm kind of thinking. I'm, I love this monochromatic. I think I'm going to make her hair pink. It's your doll. You can do whatever you want. So I had this pink palette here that I was using. It's kind of a blush pink. Just adding red and a little bit of a brick color and maybe some white. You can go outside of the lines as long as it's outside of the part that you're going to cut off if you, if you mess up. Just have some scratch paper on the side so you can take off the extra paint. Gonna make this a little darker here. This paint, this uh, I'm doing this really light. I'm not putting a ton of water, so it dries fairly quick. Most of the time, you would want to wait in between, so you get kind of these nice variations of water, a like watercolor look. And um, I'm gonna make her skin a little bit darker. Uh, can, and I don't, you can't see this, but this is what my palette looks like. I'm just, this is clean over here. So I'm going to add a little bit of white. And see if that works. That's a bit too much. To her upper lip. So this is the color. It's kind of a brick color. I don't have my guide here. I don't know what I did with it, but um, yeah, it's kind of like a brick color. A little bit of red and a lot of white makes this interesting pink. do a little kind of a brownish color for her eyes. All right, I'm going to stop there. I do want to put some kind of, there's these floating, her buns look like they're floating. So, um, 
And we'll do kind of a light brown here. And then it can put some glitter on top of that. You can always go back in and do more stuff later. Don't overdo it. Because the great thing about watercolors is um, you can go back in and you can do doodling on here. Um, so I'm going to cut this out. I think I might color this in a little bit more, these flowers, but I kind of love this muted monochromatic thing going on. And then I'll be right back. I thought I'd show you how I'm going to paint these flowers in this kind of muted tone. So this is the brighter um, Jane Davenport palette. And um, I already had a bunch of greens mixed in here. So if you're going to make this muted palette, you just want to tone it down a little bit with a little tiny bit of brown. And just go into your your um, palette here and just kind of mix it to, till, you, till you like it. You can even you know, mark it on a, um, on your scratch paper to see if it's the right color first. And this looks, is not going to look this, even this bright, um, when it dries. So what colors to do the flowers in. I think I'm just going to keep doing more of a the same line of the pinks. But I also have to make sure I color in her um, neck here. So I'm going to use that same color that I was using earlier for her, for the, um, the head of the angel. So maybe I'm going to keep doing the same color palette, but it's super watered down, really light. And then I'll go back in where these little um, openings are with the darker pink. And <clears throat> before I do cut it out, I thought I would just uh, doodle, doodle a little and show you how that works because this is mostly dry. Um, it doesn't take long to dry. So I, I always do this to make sure it's working on my hand first. And you can just go around the edges to start. And I wanted to point out that you can barely see that line where I use the gray marker. I love that. It's very subtle. And then you can make scallops if you want. <clears throat> you can just, this is really relaxing. can see this because the shadows keep it's all the shadows fault I 
Yeah, so by making angels, I think it's um, on a another level putting that vibe out into the universe. I believe in guardian angels and I believe in angels and I believe that if you ask them, they will oblige for whatever request that you have. I'm going to cut these out. You could keep adding more to them. Um, but I think I'm going to start cutting them out and assembling them. So this isn't a super long video because I tend to make videos that are way too long. And I will probably put some jewelry on her. I cut out the main shape and I added some more doodling. So I was going to show you that with the white gel pen. And I also, I don't know if you can see that added the sparkly gel pen to the insides of the flowers here. And I added like a chat chatelaine, chatelaine to her um, waistline with little dots of white and a heart. This is the jelly roll pen that's glittery. I don't know what it's called, but it's also bought from jelly roll Sakura. I cut out her and look at how cute she looks. She almost fits perfectly. Of course, I'm gonna cut the bust off. So um, I'm going to just cut it off at the neck, kind of at a curve, just to kind of play with it and see what works best. Because see, look at that. So this is, um, this is the red lead silhouette from the stencil and this is Megan's um, head. <laughs> that sounds funny, huh? Um, so I could just glue her down like that and then add like something there that looks like a little necklace. Or I could kind of put it behind and then cut this part off. I'm probably going to do this, glue this down. And um, I thought, well, she needs little ballerina slippers down here, you know, little shoes. The wings are a little bit too tiny. I mean, you could do that if you wanted to. I'm going to cut them, though, and make them a little bit wider on the side like that. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down just to get that done. So here she is, isn't she cute already? So you can see a little bit where the neck is that I glued to the back. And um, I, I'm gonna add something. I might just add some little fake pearls there, you know, those the ones that are flat. And um, then I put, I, I like the wings spread out a little bit more. So I thought I would just 
just make some little slippers for her to have on. So there's all these little scraps that you can use to make fun little doodles. And I'm going to use the same color pink combo. And I'll probably go back in over them and um, with a little marker maybe. So I'll let those dry. Oops, you know what I needed to do? I needed to give them a tab so that I can glue them on. <laughs> you can't just glue them on like that because that wouldn't work. So I'll just leave some extra up here so I can uh, have something to glue on. So this dried and uh, what I did was I just outlined it with the Uniball white gel pen and then made little squigglies and I'm going to cut it out and look at how cute. And I'm going to show you how to make a really quick rose uh, with watercolor. On all of these little scraps you can make all kinds of little doodles. Even if you don't want to make a rose, you can make circles and rectangles. And they look so cool and are wonderful additions to a junk, a junk journal or, you know, a planner or whatever that you want to decorate. So I'm going to glue those down and of course I'm going to put glitter on them. And, you know, this might be stuck onto some kind of journal at some point, but if it's not, oops, that's the wrong side. <laughs> if it's not, I can just make a background. I can, you know, add some kind of cool backing to it so it doesn't look so weird because it's, there's all these little pieces that are glued down. And here's the flat back um, pearls I was telling you about. So that's perfect. You can't see where I cut her head off. Here, this is what they look like. When you buy these, they look really white. So I always dye them. I know that's a little extra, just with some coffee. You know how we dye our, co our papers. So these are uh, not decorated just yet. I did add the wings and it occurred to me that I had made this lime color wing for this and I messed up. So this one, um, I'm waiting for this bright kind of coral color to add to this angel. And I'm gonna show you, these are before, and then I'll show you what they'll look like after I do some doodling on them. So you'll have all these little scraps and why not use them? So there's a texture to one side and then it's flat on the other. They both work the same, but I kind of like the texture side better. I'm gonna use the same formula that I've been using for this beautiful blush pink color. So, I'm going to kind of re well, those, that's a little bit too orange there. I'm going to add some white and a little bit of red. See, it makes that really pretty color there. A little bit more of this brick color and some white. And all you do is just, I'm kind of squeezing the, the tube so I get some water out and that's it. It's really simple. Don't overcomplicate it. You want those white spots because they'll give you some uh, highlights. I'm gonna see if I can find, here's the ones I did earlier. So um, you just take your white gel pen
and I have oh, so many of these I don't know which ones are working you're going to just outline if you want the flower and then you can just cut these out and then they'd be great for a spread in a journal or you can add them as decorations to your angels if you want to I'll be back with some more finished pieces. I'm adding to this uh, angel some hair because I know I'm pretty sure the face is supposed to be like a moon, but I wanted to animate it a little bit more. So I'm taking a pencil. I love these. Um, this is just a little cheapy pencil, but it has a 0 0.03, I think, lead. It's a mechanical pencil and it's very fine and so I just drew a hairline on this particular being and then I'm I don't normally do this but I really like um, when other journal journalers do this when they write on their pieces so that's what um, this particular stencil has it has lines on it so that you can write on it so um, I'm really bad about just like writing down something because I always, always misspell something. So <laughs> write it. If you're like me, write it with the pencil first. I don't know if you can see that, but it says peace be with you. And then I'm going to outline it with a black marker, a small, uh, like a, you know, thin. So these are the ones I've been using. Well, actually, the one that's, this one's way too tiny. Yeah, this is a point zero three, and if I if it's too small, then I'll go up a notch. But um, I just wanted to show you that, and um, I'll come back and show you what it looks like after I've um, marked it with the black. I also did some. I did a little bit of a line with the black there too. All right, I'm I finished with her, and I made her hair or his hair kind of wavy hair I put some brown in there and some gold accents and this is a little flower that I painted on the side and uh, added that to to her hair and I did lots of doodling on here I love the way that that came out I'm going to show you all of the dolls that I made off camera or doodled on off camera and then I'm going to just show you a couple of things that you can do um, with them I have some journals that uh, are blank and um, kind of playing around with them. These are just really so much fun. So I did a little bit more doodling on her. Uh, the tiny, tiny, tiny black dots are the really fine uh, felt tip point black markers. I just feel like these are kind of dainty and um, they require dainty embellishment. I think I don't think I did too much more to her. She has a necklace on. I did lots of really tiny pinpoint marking on here. And a little bit on the eyelashes so that it looks like uh, eye, um, lash, uh, eye lashes. And instead of really drawing a face, I just used some watercolor for her cheeks and a little bit for her mouth. And then I colored in her face except for the nose. So it's kind of like the opposite. I didn't, um, I just left that open so that it looks like her nose. And the same for the shadow on this side. I just left this blank. So that's just the color of the watercolor paper. And she also has tiny little shoes with little tiny dots on it. Here's 
Here's the big pink angel. She's kind of tall. So I wrote peace on there and lots of little dots. And her little shoes. And also what I did on this is I wanted to give her arms. So I just cut out two pieces of watercolor paper, colored them, and then just fit them so that they looked natural, like she has her arms behind her back. And I did a little bit, little bit more detail on her eyes. And then I love the way she came out. Uh, I just added some pumpkins. These are some from die cuts that I had done over Halloween. And um, I did a little tutorial a couple weeks ago on this. And I watercolored a ladder, kind of symbolic for climbing up the ladder or, you know, taking some steps to become whatever you want to, whatever you aspire to. So I thought she would look cute here. She actually looks cute in lots of places in this particular journal because it's kind of grungy. Like this, I love that right there. And you could do some writing here on the side. So she actually, like almost every page, she looks good in because the colors are, you know, more neutral. And then because there's these pumpkins underneath her, it'd be kind of cool to just glue here, her to just like the three, two sides. And then this could be a pocket to put uh, papers in or notes in. And then um, what other one was I thinking? I think she looks pretty good in some of them. Oh, at this one I had her here. I forgot about this one. So. I, add, I, I added quite a bit more to her, really tiny, tiny details with the, the felt pen on her for necklaces and like a little headband and I did some stuff on her eyes and it says free spirit because I kind of feel that she's kind of a hippie. I've been playing around with the Dinah Wakely um, gloss spray paints. Very interesting learning curve, but this one is just uh, some of the, the Dinah Wakely sprays and I just did some doodling and I thought she looked really pretty there. And then my last, these are just things I've been working on. They're not done. More of the Dinah Wakely, just crazy. I went a little crazy with the, the sprays. I just love these colors. And um, I thought she looked good there. And then uh, there was an, was it this one? Yeah, if you just do some gesso on the craft, um, it's a nice background to add things. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and um, you go and make some uh, angels. They really make you feel good um, in times of turmoil, I guess you could say. And, um, I think those good thoughts emanate through the universe and uh, hopefully, you know, better things to come, better days to come. All right. Thank you for watching. And if you want to be alerted to whenever I have a new YouTube video, make sure you subscribe. I'm almost at 15,000 at the time of this video. Woohoo! Thank you very much, everybody who's stuck around from um, and watched my videos uh, these last couple of years. Also, if you want to be notified when I'm going to be teaching a new class or one of my artsy boutiques, make sure you sign up for my newsletter. It's different than subscribing to the YouTube channel. There'll be a link down below. 
and you'll be the first to know whenever one of those things happens. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.